How to buy the best mattress for back pain relief. Lying on a bed can often make back pain worse, but while many mattresses offer back pain relief, not all of them can be perfect for you. Find out which one is best. You will need research and a selection of mattresses to test. Step one, check the arrangement and the coil counts. A higher concentration and gauge indicate better quality. Mattress depths alone, ranging from seven to 18 inches, may supply enough comfort depending on the severity of back pain. Step two, choose a foundation for inner spring mattresses that combines comfort with support. A medium firm mattress on a good spring foundation allows the shoulders and hips to rest. If too firm, thicker top padding will add some softness. Step three, look for the right support mattress from a reputable store, instead of risking more pain with a cheap alternative. Test friends' beds first to get an idea of what firmness you like and need. Remember that firm is a relative term. All bed and furniture stores use the term loosely. Test each mattress yourself to see if it's firm enough for you. Step four, buy a Visco Memory Foam Mattress, which conforms to the body shape to support weight and the contours of the back. Shop for the density that suits best. Step five, use a futon mattress for lower back pain. If used on the floor or a wooden frame, joint pain could be aggravated, so use with caution. Did you know? Back pain is the most common medical problem in the U.S. 80% of Americans experience it at some point in their lives. How to avoid back strain with a shoulder bag. A bag can do more than carry everything you own. It can also cause a lot of pain. Make sure you take care of your muscles by making your bag more back friendly. You will need a shoulder bag and good posture. Step one, clean out the stuff you don't need from your bag every night. Don't lug around more weight than you need to. Step two, limit the weight of your bag. Don't carry more than 2% of your body weight, especially using just one shoulder. A lighter bag can ease muscle strain. Buy a smaller bag to encourage yourself to keep the weight of the bag down. If you don't have room for the heavy stuff, you can't carry it. Step three, switch shoulders every 15 to 20 minutes so that one side isn't holding all the weight. Adjust the strap so that the bag can lay across the body. Step four, maintain your muscles so they can more easily handle the weight of your bag. Perform back stretches, use good posture, follow a strength training regimen at the gym that strengthens your back, and treat yourself to the occasional massage. Did you know? In 2007, Chanel unveiled a purse that was encrusted with 334 diamonds and cost over $250,000. How to get knots out of your back. Myofascial pain, or pain from muscle knots, affects one in three people. You can get the knots out using a few simple methods and be able to get on with your day pain-free. You will need a chair, a heating pad, a sock, rice, a microwave, a tennis ball, a friend, and a massage therapist. Step one, massage your supraspinatus muscle. Sit in a chair, put your right hand down to your side, and hold onto the chair's seat. Tilt your head to your left, and with your left hand, reach up to your right shoulder and massage the muscle. Step two, switch to the other side. Hold the chair with your left hand, tilt your head to the right, and massage the supraspinatus muscle on your left side. Two to three minutes per hour is all it takes to work out the knots. Step three, apply a heating pad to the knot to relax the muscle for 30 minutes at a time. You can make a heating pad yourself by filling a sock with uncooked rice, putting it in the microwave for a few minutes, and applying the hot sock to the knot. Step four, use a tennis ball to loosen knots. Lie down on the floor with your legs extended. Lean on the side with the knot and position the tennis ball beneath the knotted area. Then squirm on the floor, rolling the ball around until it is directly against the most painful area. When the ball is in position, wiggle a bit and allow your body to sink onto the tennis ball. Stay on the ball until the knot is relaxed. Step five, have someone else massage the muscle by standing behind you while you're sitting, squeezing the muscle, and breaking up the kinks and spasms in the muscle. Step six, see a massage therapist to locate and massage the trigger points of myofascial pain. A trained massage therapist will easily work out the knots that are causing you discomfort. The knots will shrink and soon you'll be able to relax without the nagging irritation of back and neck pain. Did you know? Back pain is a leading cause of disability in Americans under 45 years old. How to stretch for back pain too. Cat-cow stretch. Picture a cow in a pasture or a sleeping cat. Could their lives be any more relaxed? Since stress aggravates back pain, 
Take a cue from these animals and practice this relaxing yoga-inspired stretch. You will need comfortable clothes and a floor. Step one, get down on your hands and knees. Your hands should be pointing forward and aligned underneath your shoulders, and your knees should be aligned underneath your hips. Step two, inhale and slowly arch your back over a count of five, dropping your belly towards the floor and raising your head, chest, and tailbone up. Don't overuse your lower back muscles. Let gravity do most of the work. Step three, hold the stretch for three seconds. Step four, exhale and slowly round your back over a count of five, dropping your head and tailbone down and pulling your belly inwards. Step five, hold the stretch for three seconds. To vary the stretch, rotate your midsection in a clockwise circle as you arch up and then down. Repeat five to eight times and then rotate counterclockwise for the same number of times. Step six, repeat the stretch three to five times in each direction. Did you know? Americans spend an estimated $24 billion a year on back pain treatments. How to assess back pain. Low back pain affects most adults at some time in their lives. If your pain is creeping up the scale from one to 10, use these tips to find out what might be the cause of your aching back. You will need the duration of your pain, your medical history, a lumbar test, a thorough physical examination, and radiographic tests. Optional, laboratory tests. Step one, look at the duration of your pain. Acute back pain is pain that has been present for six weeks or less. Subacute back pain has lasted six to 12 weeks, and chronic back pain lasts more than 12 weeks. Step two, examine the types of back pain. Symptoms in the lower extremities may mean nerve-related sciatica. Underlying conditions like spinal fractures, tumors, or infections are more serious type of pain. The third category of back pain includes mechanical back pain. Every type requires different evaluations and treatment. Step three, evaluate your health history to determine the cause. List any health problems, including diseases or infection, type and duration of medications, and trauma. Step four, do an at-home lumbar test. Get on the floor on all fours and round your back upward to the ceiling like a cat. If your pain worsens, you have pain upon lumbar flexion. Then arch your back towards the floor. You have lumbar extension pain if your pain worsens in the second position. If you have lumbar extension pain, you likely have long-term or recurrent back pain. Step five, get a thorough physical exam that evaluates range of motion, palpitation of the spine, heel-toe walk, squat and rise, palpitation of the sciatic notch, straight leg rising test, reflexes and motor testing, and neurological testing. Laboratory tests are usually not necessary unless a tumor or infection is suspected. Step six, consider radiographic tests such as MRI or CT scans if your symptoms last for more than one month and the cause has not been determined or red flags appear in your health history or after the examination. With proper treatment, your pain will start creeping back down the scale from 10 to one. Did you know? Low back pain is one of the top 10 reasons patients seek care from a family physician. How to stretch for back pain. Upper back spine roller. If you work at a desk all day, you probably have poor posture. And if you have poor posture, you probably have upper back pain. This stretch can work out the kinks. Just don't hold back. You will need comfortable clothes, a large towel, two large rubber bands, and a floor. Optional, three to five inch diameter foam roller. Step one, fold the large towel in half lengthwise and roll it very tightly, creating a cylinder that's three to five inches in diameter. Replace the rolled towel with a foam roller, a common and inexpensive physical therapy tool. Step two, place one rubber band around the rolled towel near each end to keep it tightly rolled. Step three, Place the rolled towel on the floor where you will lie so that it will be perpendicular to your body. Step four, lie on your back on the floor so the rolled towel is at the base of your shoulder blades. Your knees should be bent and your feet flat on the floor. Step five, cradle your head by cupping the upper part of the back of your head in your interlaced fingers. Bring your elbows toward each other so that your arms are along either side of your face. Step six, Lie back over the rolled towel so that you are arching your upper back. Pull your belly button in toward your spine and keep your chin slightly tucked. Make sure your knuckles, tailbone, and bottom of your lower back are against the floor. Step seven, hold for five seconds. Step eight, 
Rise up slightly, slide the rolled towel up one inch, and repeat the stretch. Step 9. Continue rising up, sliding the rolled towel one inch higher, and repeating the stretch until you have stretched from the base to the top of your shoulder blades. And then, yep, back off. Did you know? 50% of working Americans suffer back pain every year. How to give a neck and shoulder massage. A neck and shoulder massage works wonders to transform a stressed partner into a relaxed and happy companion. Just try it. You will need a chair and a cushion. Optional, a quiet location. Do not massage someone who recently experienced neck or shoulder injuries or who has pain. Step one, seat your partner facing backward in a chair. Then place a cushion between the chair and your partner's chest, patting the top of the chair as a chin rest. Perform the massage in a quiet location to enhance relaxation. Step two, position yourself behind your partner. Then place your hands on the upper shoulder next to the neck, squeezing the muscles on each side of the neck until you reach the shoulder tops. Repeat several times. Stay relaxed when you give a neck and shoulder massage by lowering your shoulders, relaxing hands between sequences, and proceeding calmly. Step three, extend your arms, laying one hand over the other. Then, place your fingers along your partner's upper neck and rub in circles with your fingertips all the way down the shoulders. Repeat on the other side. Step four, stand to your partner's side. Then, cup your hands around the upper neck, pressing into the side of the neck with your fingers and using your hands, knead the muscles down the neck. Repeat on the other side. Step five, Complete the massage by applying calming, rhythmic downward strokes moving from the shoulders down the back. Now, if you're lucky, your partner will return the favor and give you a soothing neck and shoulder massage. Did you know? Massage can improve a number of health problems, including back pain, osteoarthritis, cancer symptoms, and anxiety.